All right, we're working through T8 case problem review. Let's get this started. All right, and as usual, so this is um, cpastare.html. I'm gonna open this in a new tab. This is the page that we're working on. Now I can take this and move it out of the way. And now we can look through the assignment itself. So you can read through what we're going to be doing. Um, you see the final version here. I mean, it's a static image of the final version, right? This is, um, you know, a multimedia and animation assignment. So the static image doesn't do us much favor. Um, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to build through this. So let's get started. So we're going to enter our name and date at the top of three files. And those, well, two of those files are open. So we did that. And then on the HTML page, insert a link to cpmedia2.css and animate2.css. So I'm going to take the existing href. I'm just going to copy that and change styles to uh, media and styles to animate. All right, that's done. Um, and you know, it's important, let's come back here, refresh, hit F12, and make sure that in our console, we don't have any errors. Okay, so now I know I loaded those files correctly. And I'm, you know, I keep coming back to this HTML page time and time again to make sure that the thing I just did is working. Okay, don't try to do this entire assignment and then jump in and see if everything worked. Okay, so now in the HTML, we need to find the aside for listen up, which is right here directly after the paragraph. So here's the paragraph <clears throat> directly after it, turning an audio clip with the controls displayed in the browser. So we use the audio tag and controls displayed is the controls Boolean attribute. So just by having this Boolean attribute here, it'll display the, you know, the, the little Windows uh, player within our HTML page. And then we have two audio sources. So we have source src equals cp song.mp3. And this type is audio MPEG. I think it's audio MPEG. And then we have another source, OGG, and its type is audio OGG. I know that one's right. And if the browser does not support HTML, um, HTML5 audio, so if the browser does not support this audio tag, um, have a paragraph, the message, update your browser. So if your browser does not support the audio tag, it'll ignore this, it'll ignore this, it'll ignore this, and then it'll display this paragraph. All right, so I probably, yeah, I should have checked the linking CSS. Okay, that's done. And I'll insert the audio. That's good. We can come back here and refresh and see. Here it is. We have our player here with the controls. And when I hit play, Every night at seven. All right, so it's working. And now we're going to add some video. So right here, right after in this in focus, after the paragraph, insert a video clip with the video controls enabled. So very similar to the audio method there, right? Um, oh, and display a poster. So remember poster is like that, um, like the movie poster outside a movie theater. It's the little preview of the video. Okay, so the movie poster outside the, the movie theater is a preview of the movie. This is your preview, is CP poster. And then we have two tracks, two video sources, at rack.mp4, type 
equals video mp4. And another one for cat rack. Dot webm. And this is video webm. And same thing with the upgrade message. So I'm just going to copy that from the audio and paste it down here. Directly after the two video sources in the video element include a caption track. Okay, so right here. We are going to add a track and the kind equals kind equals captions. That was nice that it was auto completed for us. Source is CP captions 2.dtt and the label for this is movie captions and it is the default caption for this track. And we're going to be working on this captions VTT. It's an empty file right now. We're going to be working on that a little bit later. So let's check this out. All right, we have done that. If I come back here and refresh. So what you see right now, where it says the hat rack dance, this is the poster. And then I hit play. And the video starts playing. Now kicked over, I'm sure we're going to work on some CSS in a little bit to modify these audio and video elements. Uh, but right now we're going to jump over to the captions file and add an initial line that this is web VTT. Okay. And then add the following. So we need a title that appears at a half second in, and it's going to go until five seconds in, containing the text, the hat rack dance, closed in a class tag, so in VTT that's just C, with the name title. Right. I'm walking through this um, for my class, I'm just gonna give you this stuff because we don't do a lot with captions. Um, the line is going to be at 10%, and we're going to align this to the middle. All right, let's keep going on this then. Um, we need a a sub cue five and a half to nine seconds in with the interval with the text from the Royal Wedding 1951. So this is my text. And this is a subtitle. And this is going to be going from five and a half seconds nine seconds and close the royal wedding 1951 within i tags to italicize it and place it at 10 percent line and in the middle so we already have this here okay, let's come back refresh let's see so a half second in the hat rack dance goes until five seconds you can watch the timer here a half second later from the royal wedding and that's going to that's italicized and ends at nine seconds all right Almost done here. A finish cue so at the end of this thing. And I just, I copy and paste these timers. It's easier. Um, so from one minute and five second mark, so one, five point oh oh oh, to the one minute, 11 second mark, and in the text, see more videos at Cinema Penguin. And close Cinema Penguin within I tags to italicize it. It's the caption at the 80% line. So I'm going to take this here, paste to here. 80% line. So we're coming down 80%. And the 90% position. So we hadn't worked with that yet. So that's 90% to the right of the video. And because we're doing that, we want to align this to the end or like right align the text. One more time, let's look at this. I'm just gonna skip ahead like to the end here to what, like a minute, five seconds. We should see down in the lower right, our finished caption. There it is. Let's check this out. Good job, that passed. Um, you know, and, and WebVTT is really particular. You can look up, there's a WebVTT validator. You can look that up and dump your code in there if you're having any problems with this, but just make sure you get this code as shown here. All right, now 
let's work on the media. All right, we're going to add some styles to this. Insert a rule for all audio and all video elements that displays them as a block element. The width of 95%. Center the element. So remember, they're block. So we can center this by setting the top and bottom to 20 pixels and the left right to auto. So this left right auto is what centers it, right? And normally what you've we've done in other assignments is just margin zero auto. Um, but in this case, we want some actual margin on these elements. Okay, we're not being graded on track styles. I'll go through it really quickly. So when you're dealing with track styles, what we're doing is we're using the Q selector. So let's just, I'm just gonna dump the rules in here. It sets the background color to transparent, did that. Sets the text shadow. So we're offset by one and has a blur of two pixels and the shadow is black. The actual color of the text is this 255, 177, 66. The size is 1.2 M, and then the font family is sans serif. So we're getting rid of the hat and feet on our font. And then we're also going to add, let me add a bunch of blank lines here so I can move this up. When we're working with the title, so if you remember, I have this C dot title. This means this is the title class. So cues that have the class of title, what we want to do is make the font larger and we want the font family to have at and feet, right? Serif. So if I come back, refresh this, There, that's serif, right? It's that orange color that we got from the queue. Everything's orange, so that appears to be working. So you're not tested on this, but there's the code for it. And again, I will just give that to my class. All right, that passed, great work. Let's move on. Um, we did that, we verified everything. We've been doing this all along. I think the only thing we didn't, Every night at seven. I don't know if we clicked on that yet, but I just did, so that's working. All right, now we're going to do some animations. Maxine wants to create a transition for the links at the top of the page that enlarges the text. All right, we're going to be an animate, by the way. <clears throat> it moves it out and above its default position. Open this and go to the transition style and create a rule for the nav top links. Make sure you get that um, capital L in top links and the anchors in the nav element with an ID of top links. So if we come back to our HTML, nav with an ID of top links and anchors. So these are the things that we're talking about. So when we have these, by default, we're going to set the color to this RGB color, this white, and we're going to add a text shadow of one pixel, negative one pixel, blur of one pixel, and RGBA of zero, 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 one, black. That's a very complicated way to say black. And then use this the transform style. We're going to transform this to a scale of one to one. And I don't know why I'm typing this out, you can just copy paste and a translate of zero. So what does this do? Let me take this out, come back here. We look at these things, refresh, nothing has changed because the font is already white. Oh, I guess there's a, a, a shadow on there that there wasn't before. And it's really hard to see. Um, if I blow this up, you can see that there's that shadow that goes to the upper right. Okay. Um, so when I put this transform in here, scale of one to one means make it a hundred percent size and translate Y zero pixel means move it zero pixels. So it doesn't do anything. 
But what this is doing is it's setting the base for our actual transition. So let me see here. Let me um, check to see what we need to verify. Oh, we're only verifying the transition. Well, I guess they can't verify that we put this in correctly, but I'm going to do this. All right, I'm gonna come back to this point in a moment, okay? Let's not forget this is here. When you hover over these items, what we wanna do is set the text color to this, orange color, don't forget your sound icon. The shadow on it, I'm just gonna copy this shadow to make my life easier. It's 000 0.5 with a horizontal offset of zero, a vertical offset of 15, a blur of four. And the transform, I copied this transform. I guess I could have copied that entire section and just changed things. Um, two, two. So it's going to double the size and the translate Y is negative 15 pixels. So it's going to go up 15 pixels, right? It's going to go vertically up 15 pixels. So when I hover over one of these things, it takes the actual element, moves it up 15 pixels, changes the color, and my shadow is way down here. And what it makes it look like is that these things are, you know, coming off the page kind of, right? The shadow's still in the back, but it pops up like that. Okay, now let's go back to this bit that I told you I was going to come back to. And that is, you know, this is very choppy. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a transition uh, duration of 1.2 seconds and the tra transition timing function of linear. So it's going to smoothly, steadily, through the 1.2 seconds change from this to this. So now I refresh this, one Mississippi two, like 1.2 seconds and look at even like the font color it goes from white to orange. And it looks like it's moving, right? And as we bounce over these things, you can kind of pop up and down and everything. So this is our animation for this section. Pretty cool stuff. And you can play with, you know, the transition duration or timing functions as you wish, but just make sure that they're that 1.2 and linear. Let's check this out. Let's move on. So the list of films have been stored in a table nested within a dev with the ID of marquee. So that's this here. If we look at a table with a div ID marquee, and you see there's a bunch of them, right? And if we come back here, we only see going back to 1969. Everything after that is cut off. But if I look, you know, there's a lot of movies before that time. So why is that cut off? Well, if we look at, I'm going to guess it's in styles. Here we go. Overflow hidden. So that that's taking this and everything that, that goes outside of it, the box just gets hidden. So we want, and the table's long, so it's cut off. Um, we want the contents to automatically scroll upwards as a theater marquee. So we're going to change the top position of the table over a specific time interval, moving the table upward. So we're going to take this table inside this div and make it move up and make it look like it's scrolling. So we're going to go to in animate, go to the marquee section, insert a rule for the marquee div. So that's div, M-A-R-Q-U-E-E, -E, marquee div. And we want to set the position of this to relative. Add a style for the table nested within the marquee div. Okay, so div marquee, table, and that table was called, so we have div marquee table film list. And this table position is absolute. Go to the keyframe section. And again, I'm going to put a bunch of blank lines here so I can move this up in the video. Create an animation called scroll. Okay, so I'm going to say keyframes and it's called scroll. And 
what is this going to do? When we start at 0%, we want to set the top property to 250 pixels. And when we're done at 100%, top is going to be set to negative 1300 pixels. And you know that's not going to really show us anything until we get down to the animation styles here. So I need to apply this scroll animation to the table within the div marquee. So I have div, oh, what was that? Div marquee, M-A-R-Q-U-E-E, -E, and the table within that div marquee. All right, we know this table is called film list, but I'm just gonna leave it like this. All right, so we need to apply this animation. So the animation name is scroll. That tells it to go look over here. The animation duration is going to be over 50 seconds. It's going to take 50 seconds to change from the top property from going from 250 to negative 1300. And how is it going to do that? So the animation timing function is linear. And finally, the animation duration count is infinite. So it's going to just keep doing this again and again and again. Come back, refresh. So here we go. This table is moving up. If I inspect this thing and I find the table, look, you can see the table. Now the position's like zero. And so what we're changing is the position of the table within the div. And you're kind of just seeing, you know, through a keyhole, you're seeing part of the table. Kind of like a, a masking uh, in Photoshop or in video, right? And it's going to keep going until the top position is negative 1300 and then it starts over again and it's taking 50 seconds to get there i'm going to change this down to five seconds so we can see it actually loop mississippi two mississippi three mississippi four mississippi five mississippi right and it just starts over again okay it doesn't like scroll like a wheel it just starts over again but there you go that is scrolling let's check this step Great work. Verify this works. We did this. We could run it through the HTML validator if we needed to. Um, we can also run our CSS through the Jigsaw CSS validator, or you can even search for the Web VTT validator and check that code as well. So we're done. Go ahead and submit this assignment. And you've just done the Fred Astaire biography page.